Hey guys, it's Elena. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to walk you through how to make your very own muslin quilt. This is perfect for babies and little kids. I'm so excited because I'm obsessed with these muslin quilts by Clementine Kids and I just had to make one for myself. So I'm gonna walk you through all the steps and you can make one for yourself as well. This blanket is 46 by 46 inches. And so I got about one and one third yards of a muslin fabric for the top one and one third yards of a muslin fabric for the bottom and then batting that was around or at least 46 inches by 46 inches. I started off by laying out all of my fabric. So I laid out the bottom layer of my muslin and then I laid out and smoothed out the batting on top of my muslin and it's really important at this step to make sure that things are sitting nice and flat and there's nothing like puckering or bunching up underneath. So once you feel good that the bottom layer is smooth, the batting is smooth, then you can lay on the top layer of your muslin and also make sure that this is smooth. <laughs> if you are seeing a pattern, we want things to be as smooth as possible. Try to line up as many edges as you can. Things aren't gonna be perfect in this initial step, but that's totally okay. So once you have things lined up and nice and smooth, you can go ahead and start basting with pins. So with this, you wanna just start in the center and then work your way out. You don't need a ton of safety pins, but just enough so that things are holding together all throughout the quilt. And then I just went ahead and trimmed off that excess batting and any super obvious excess fabric that's like totally hanging over the edge. Again, at this step, it doesn't have to be perfect or the exact size as we still have a couple other things that we need to do first. Once everything is pinned and basted, I'm going to figure out where I want to quilt and sew my lines. So I'm just gonna do a couple of vertical lines throughout this quilt. And so I'm basically just counting out the total number of stripes. <laughs> uh, if you don't have stripes, then you'll just wanna measure, but I'm just going off of the stripes. And I'm deciding I wanna do four or five lines. And so I'm just marking those and pinning it at the top and starting to sew down. Again, working from the center of the quilt, working my way out. You always want to start in the center and that will reduce the puckering or any like weirdness going on <laughs> if you can start in the center. So basically I'm just starting at the top of my quilt and using my hands and my fingers to smooth things out as I sew down. And I'm just again following these stripes and sewing down in the center of one of these blue stripes. So once I have done that, I am finally doing my, I guess, final trim all the way around on the edge of this quilt. So making sure that it's folded so that I can do one big long sweep with my rotary cutter. You can use scissors, but the rotary cutter will help you get the most straight line. And then once I feel good about that, I am using pins so that I can sew just around the perimeter of the entire quilt. This isn't totally necessary, but this will just make it a little bit easier when we go to put our binding on at the very end. So here's what that looks like. Again, I did a very small seam allowance because I don't want this to show, um, but 
I am trying to mimic a Clementine Kids muslin quilt, which are adorable, and they have rounded corners, and so I wanted to do rounded corners on this quilt as well. So I just found a plastic plate. I lined that up with the edges and used that as a guide to round the corners. Once I did that, it is time to put on the binding, which is very exciting. So I am using double folded bias tape. I am unfolding it completely and then lining up the raw edges of the bias tape in my quilt. And then I am sewing in that first divot closest to that raw edge. And I'm doing that all the way around my quilt making sure to fold in that initial start when I am adding my new bias tape so that when I go to close it, it has something to overlap and finish nicely. And when you go around these curved edges, it's really nice because you don't have to worry about doing mitered corners because there's no corners <laughs> we just have these curved edges so it's really not difficult you're just gonna follow it and go really slow and once you've gone all the way around and added your binding you're going to trim off any excess fabric or batting so that when you go to fold over the bias tape it can sit nice and flat and you're going to completely cover that seam from earlier. So what I like to do is trim off any excess fabric and then fold down my bias tape binding and then pin all the way around. And you can see I've gone a little bit overboard with the pins along this rounded edge, but that just really helped me feel like I'm gonna do this right on the very first time. So once I've done that, I am just sewing very, very close to the edge of my binding, but on the actual binding. So I'm sewing on the binding, but sewing very close to the edge so that it will hit the front and the back. If you'd like, you can hand stitch this, but I am not a fan of hand stitching. <laughs> so I am just taking my time going really slow and stitching all the way around, taking out those pins as I go. And whenever I am done with that, these are the results that you're gonna get. It looks so good. I am so happy with how it turned out. I cannot believe how good it looks. And I made it myself. <laughs> I obviously love these other muslin quilts that you can purchase from these cute boutiques. They're beautiful, they're high quality, but I'm really glad that I was able to replicate it myself and make something that I'm really proud of with my own fabric. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this was helpful for you and encourage you to make your own quilts. See you in the next one.